Hi, this is Pastor Coy Sampson with the Mace Road Church. Welcome to Psalms 365.1, where we will be praying through the book of Psalms one day at a time, asking God to shape our lives to the truth of Scripture in Christ Jesus, devoting ourselves to the heart of God as revealed to the psalmist by Holy Spirit, and praying the Holy Scriptures back to our Father in Heaven. Hello, welcome to day 218 of Psalm 365.1. Today we're praying through Psalm chapter 95, praying... Really, it's a call to worship, an invitation to worship our God. And so Psalm 95, it begins with saying, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully with psalms. And so I don't know how many of you have been praying along with the psalms um, as we went through this journey. Oh, how many times we've shouted the psalms out as we worship God. But this is as it instructs us as a call to worship, to sing to the Lord, to shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation, to come into his presence with thanksgiving, to shout joyfully the psalms. And so the challenge is, when was the last time you shouted joyfully to God? When was the last last time you were shouting in worship to the Lord? And I think sometimes our worship service may look a lot different than the worship services that the Psalms depict with drums and trumpets and shouting and and dancing. And this is what worship looks like. And it looks different in different places in the Psalms. Sometimes worship in the Psalms is very mournful with tears and lamenting. And sometimes it's shouting and dancing with joy with trumpets and, and timbrels. And sometimes it's it's just a harp playing lightly. And sometimes even in this psalm, it says uh, in verses six and seven, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. It's praying, kneeling, prostrating yourself, humiliating, humbling yourself before the God of the universe, the God of our salvation, the God who is our shepherd and we the sheep of his pasture. And so worship can look very different for different settings and different times of our life. But there is a time to shout with joy to the Lord, with thanksgiving, giving him praise for who he is. And then verses three through five, it says, for the Lord is great, a great God, the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. And so this takes our worship just out of our, out of our homes, out of our rooms, out of our uh, places of prayer, out of the sanctuary, even out of the churches, into a wide world. Sometimes our focus in worship can be so small just on our situation, what we're going through and our praise to God that we forget it's all encompassing God of the universe, God of the entire world, God of creation from the highest mountains to the depths of the seas, all the lands he formed by the might of his hand and expanding our mind past our situation, past our moment in worship, past our even our, our church bodies and our nation and seeing the, the entire world in his hand from the heights of the mountains to the depths of the sea, the great, vast love and might and strength of our God, the creator of the universe, and really bringing all this into our hearts and our minds when we worship. It's really a call to see the greatness of our God and maybe the, the, the smallness of our situation, how insignificant we are in this vast plan of God, but that his focus and his love and his grace is still toward us and for us. He says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness when your fathers tested me. And so if you have a different translation, this is the New King James uh, uh, translation. But if you have a different translation, it might it might translate this a little more accurately. Like if it's an NIV or, or a NASB, it will say, Do not harden your hearts as in Meribah, 
or the day of uh, Masa. And so what it's saying there is when the Israelites were in the desert and they cried out to God and they were quarreling with one another and quarreling with Moses and saying, why did you bring out us out to the desert that we would die of hunger and thirst? And so twice Moses struck the rock and water flowed out. Once he struck the rock at God's instruction and water came out. And the other time he struck it out of rebellion to what God spoke and water flowed. And both times God provided in the desert. But here he says, do not harden your hearts as you did in a rebellion. And so at Kadesh Meribah, where Moses struck the rock, he wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. And the Israelites were not allowed to go to the promised land because of their rebellion at Kadesh Barnea. And so he's encouraging them not to rebel against the word of God. And so what was the word of God that they rebelled against? And the scriptures say that their rebellion was that they did not believe the word of the Lord in the desert. And so in Hebrews, it tells us that in Hebrews 3, they did not believe the word of God in in the desert. And so they weren't allowed to enter the promised land. But in Hebrews 4, 3, it says, we who believe shall enter his rest. We who believe in the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for our sins, that he washed us in his blood, and we put our faith and our trust and our hope in his promise, that we believe the word of God, that we shall enter his rest. And this is our promise. So when it says at the end, so I swore an oath in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. We have the fulfillment of that in Hebrews chapter four and verse three. Lord, help us to be those who believe and trust in you. And so enter into your rest, into that great Sabbath. And Father God, help us to enter into a deep place of worship and glorifying you today as we pray and shout Psalm 95, verses 1 through 11. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms for the Lord is is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands he formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people, the sheep of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me. They tried me, though they saw my work. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore an oath in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Lord, We give you thanks and we give you praise that we can enter into that rest by faith. We, the sheep of your pasture, help us to hear your voice and follow after you today. We love you. We give you praise. Amen. I love you. Jesus loves you. Love one another. We'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.